Uh, so uh, welcome again. In our last lecture, we have discussed about the small signal model or the small signal analysis of the MOS. In this lecture, we'll try to see the MOS capacitance and try to include them in the small signal analysis. So now, uh, one may ask like, what is this MOS capacitance? So if you see the basic structure of the MOS, it is implemented using uh, your gate and the um, oxide and of course the uh, semiconductor. So it is like a capacitor, right? So and there are different unwanted capacitance that are there in the different nodes of a MOSFET, the gate, drain and the source. So those capacitance are very small. In fact, um, it may be like, you know, um, 10 femtofarad or maybe 100 femto or maybe at max 1 pico, depending upon the uh, technology as well as the size or the application. So one may ask like, uh, what's the use? Like they are so small, so it can be ignored. The answer to this question is no, because the current technology deals with a frequency of tens of gigahertz. So whether it may be digital circuits or analog circuits, the clock frequencies are in the range of 10 of gigahertz. So even though those capacitance are very small, this capacitance have significant effect in the uh, performance of the VLSI circuits. So let's look into the different capacitance or the parasitic capacitance. So these capacitance are unwanted. So they are sometimes called as parasitic capacitance. They are like the parasites. So let's look into the different capacitance that are there uh, in the different nodes of a MOSFET. So, so let's revise the MOS structure. We have our drain and the source. Both are N plus or highly doped N type material. Then we have the silicon oxide and on top of that we have a gate. So if you see clearly here, this is, uh, of course, here we have the substrate. So it is like a metal oxide and the semiconductor. So it is like a capacitor. So there's a capacitance present in it. Also, there are also capacitance here and here. We will see things um, more in details. And of course, if you see, we have the context. So these black colors are the context by which the, uh, you know, the source and the drain are connected to the other MOSFET or to the external world. So we will discuss more about this uh, context or this structure or how these are fabricated more in later lectures. So if you try to see the dimensions of the MOSFET, it, it has W and L. And these are the two parameters which are accessible to the designer. The circuit designer cannot access the, uh, this Z axis. Okay, he can only access the X and Y axis, which is uh, W and L, and he doesn't have access to the depth of this uh, structure. So if you see, this is what uh, a MOSFET uh, layout looks like uh, to a circuit designer. So he can manipulate the W as well as the L. The circuit designer cannot access the depth or the Z axis. So now let's see uh, what are the different uh, capacitance that are present in the MOSFET. First, uh, we know that as uh, the gate voltage increases, in this case, let's assume that the source and the drain are connected to the ground. And we are just applying a, a potential here, the VZ potential, and we are slowly increasing this potential. Okay. So what happens is, as we slowly increase the potential, the depletion layer will be formed. And as we keep increasing this VZ, of course, this um, inversion will happen. And because these electrons will be accumulated here. So, uh, so if you see here, uh, I have this one plate and this another plate. And in between, I have this uh, oxide. So, or insulator. So it is like a capacitor. So one capacitor will be formed here because of this. Because of this depletion layer, 
right one more capacitor will be formed if you remember from the uh, devices class or from the basic electronics uh, whenever there is a depletion layer especially like in case of a diode in diode also we know that there is a depletion layer and because of which a capacitance is formed so one more capacitance will be formed because of this depletion layer and now if you see here uh, there is this plate between this between this gate and the source right so this will lead to a uh, capacitance which is also called as the overlap capacitance so here will be one capacitance and there will be one capacitance which is of course different from this capacitance so these two capacitance will be formed now again if you see this drain right uh, eventually uh, now it is grounded but eventually it will be connected to higher potential and the bulk may be at a lower potential and the source and drain may be at a higher potential so the bulk may be at the ground so because of which there will be a reverse biasing because this is p and this is n and if it is at higher potential and there will be a depletion layer just like in case of a pn junction so because of which there will be a capacitance that is coming here between the uh, source and the substrate if source and substrate are at the same potential this capacitance will not come into picture but there is as we have seen that there's a possibility at this uh, source and the bulb can be at uh, different uh, you know potential especially if i'm uh, you know staking something like this if i have the source and then like if you have done the assignment uh, it is it is something like this so if you see here this the source of this one the source of this one is grounded but whereas the source of this one will be a di different potential and a bulb will be connected to the ground right so uh, this is ground this can be some at potential one volt so the source of this transistor is higher than the ground so because of which there is a potential difference and of course this is a reverse bias uh, pn junction and because of which this capacitance will come into picture and of course for the case of the drain this is the bulk is grounded and this is at higher potential maybe one volt and this is at zero volt so because of which again this is a p n junction and because of which uh, the depletion layer will be formed and because of which a uh, uh, depletion capacitance will be formed okay so these are the different uh, parasitic capacitance that are present in the mosfet we will try to analyze each of them uh, more in details so now let's give a name to all these capacitance so um, c1 is the oxide capacitance between the gate and the channel this is the oxide capacitance next uh, this is the depletion capacitance between this channel and the substrate and this c2 and c3 are the overlap capacitance uh, between the overlap region of the you know gate and the drain as well as the gate and the source and uh, these uh, two c dip 2 and c dip 3 are, are the junction capacitance between the source drain areas and the substrate so now uh, let's try to include this capacitance in our MOS model so this is our MOSFET right so of course like if we try to include the capacitance at its node so it will be something like this so i have a capacitance between this gate and the drain terminal so i'll have one capacitance something like this between the grid and drain terminal which is called a cgd i'll have between the gate and the source c cs okay and of course i have a bulk terminal here the substrate so i'll have this this is a, my b so i'll have a capacitance which is c d b and then i'll have a capacitance between the source and the bulk which is c s b and there will also be a capacitance between the gate and the bulk and this will name as c g b okay so these are the uh, different capacitance that uh, we can model or include in the MOS model of course we'll try to see uh, we'll try to correlate this one and this uh, in the next slides so uh, let's uh, write it clearly 
So I have my CGD, CGS, CDB, CSB, and CGB. Let's try to find out how a designer can estimate or evaluate each of these capacitance. So as you know that as a designer, we have access only to the W and L, right? So, and of course, maybe a little bit of this X, this size of the drain and the size of the source, this we will see a little later. So assuming that we have access to W and L, this is the parameter. Let's try to see how we can calculate this. So to calculate this one, the C1, this C ox parameter will be given from the foundry that will be fabricating our device. So and because we have W and L values, right? So of course, not that this diagram and this diagram are not proportionate. This is not the top view of this one. It is just an illustration. So I'll have W into L. So if I multiply W into L, not that this L is different than the L drawn. So because of this, uh, you know, the actual L is from here to here, right? From here to here, this is the L, right? That means this is L drawn and L drawn is here, right? This one to here. So L is equal to L drawn minus 2 LD. So this will give the capacitance C1, okay? Because this C ox again is, uh, you know, uh, farad per centimeter square or farad per meter square. Okay, so this will be given uh, from the foundry, which is the uh, capacitance per unit area for this region. So this is how we can calculate C1. So now let's try to uh, see how do we calculate C2 and C3, the overlap capacitance. So the overlap capacitance is calculated by, uh, you know, W into COV. Uh, basically, the COV is a parameter that will be given by the foundry which basically is uh, uh, capacitance per unit length. So the capacitance present here, right, is defined as capacitance per unit length. So basically you can see that the LD is already included inside this COV, okay. So the COV is given by the foundry that this is the overlap capacitance per unit length and you, you can just multiply with the W, then you can get the overlap capacitance. So these are the two parameters. The COV is defined as per unit capacitance per unit length or farad per centimeter or it may be given as farad per meter. And COX is given by um, capacitance per unit area. So which is like uh, farad per centimeter square. So please don't be confused with the COV and COX. So these are just the, some constant value which help the designer to evaluate the capacitance. Okay, so now next, uh, th let's try to see how can we include this uh, C1, C2, C3 in our model or uh, suppose we have this CGS, right? So let's see uh, in CGS, correct, uh, which all capacitance will come. So if you observe here, the C1 will be a part of CGS as well as CZD and this C2 definitely will be a part of the CZS and C3 will be a part of CZD. So let's try to see how uh, we distribute these three capacitance and include in the model in the next slide. So if you see, um, if you see these CZS and CZD, so the overlap capacitance is here and overlap capacitance is here and of course this is my C C1, right? This is C1 this is C2 and C3, right? So these two overlap capacitance, this will be a part of the CGS, W into COB. Now, if, the, if you see the C1, the C1 will be distributed half to CGS and half to CGD. So it will be 0.5 W into L C ox because this is, this parameter is C1. Right, this capacitance C1. So in CZD, we have the again this overlap capacitance W into COB, which is this overlap capacitance, okay, W into COB plus half of this C1, which is again this one, 
okay this is so if you see here the c1 is distributed half to uh, czs and other half to czd and this c of uh, w into c of and w into c of will come both to czs and czd so this is in the case of the linear region in case of the saturation region if you, if you see here the channel is not at all connected to the drain okay so this channel is now cut off from the drain so this c1 will not be appearing in the czd so only there will be this overlay uh, overlay component part okay the overlay capacitance so if you see here the czs will have this overlay capacitance which is c2 this is c3 c1 so this CDS will have the overlap capacitance this C2 and this overlap capacitance C3 okay and uh, this C1 will be only in case of CGS but it will not be full because of the shape of the channel only two third of this C1 will be counted in the CGS this is a very important point only two third of the C1 so this is C1 right only two third of the C1 will be included in the CGS, whereas in case of the CGD, uh, zero, right? None of the C1 will be included in the CGD in the saturation region. One may ask, how do you get this down two third? So there is a derivation on this, which we will not be covering in this uh, discussion. So you can refer to this book if you want to know how this two third uh, factor comes into picture. So and the point here is that the C1 is distributed differently uh, to the CZS and CZD in different regions of operations. So let's try to draw a graph of the CZS and CZD and how does it looks like in the different regions. So I have this transistor okay and this is my uh, drain voltage VD and this is my gate voltage VZ. So what I'm now doing is I'll keep this one fixed and and i will slowly increase this vz so what will happen is if i'm increasing this vzs or vz of course the s is ground first uh, it, uh, before the vz is less than vth it will be in cutoff region and i'll be crossing the threshold and then i'll be going into the saturation region because uh, my this vz is uh, lesser than vd but as soon as this VZ is greater than VD by VTH, it will go to triad region or the linear region. Okay, so let's see how it looks like. So uh, when the it is in the cutoff region, when my VZ is less than VTH, no channel is formed, and the only capacitance that I'll have here is the uh, C2, which is the overlap capacitance, which is W into uh, COV and for this also it is the same one okay now as soon as I increase this uh, VZ and it is more than VTH and it goes to the saturation region right my CZS will be we know that it will be two-third of uh, the C1 okay two-third of C1 so this is what I will be getting the CZS will be W into COV plus two-third of this c1 okay and of course if you see here uh, in case of the czd here it was this w into cov and now also it, it is the same this overlap capacitance only so the overlap capacitance will continue in the saturation region and uh, we, as it goes to the triad region right as it goes to a triad region this c1 will be distributed between this CGS and CGD of course the overlap capacitance is always there in all the regions so these two capacitance will be same and it will be WCOV which is the overlap capacitance plus half of the C1 which is WL into Cox so this is the distribution of the capacitance between the CGS and CGD in the different regions so if you are considering uh, or doing a small signal analysis so this will be the distribution of the capacitance uh, the CGS will be 
WCOB plus two third of the WLC ox and CZD will be only W into uh, the COB. Okay, so now we have uh, discussed the distribution of the capacitance of the C2, C1 and C3 and how do we include in the um, CGS and CZD. Now let's see how uh, to see this capacitance and this capacitance. So if you see here, it's very clear this will be included in the source to bulk capacitance and this also will be included in the uh, drain to uh, bulk or drain to substrate capacitance. So let's see how do we calculate now these two capacitances. So this is my most structure. So if I uh, zoom and just look into this drain or source, right, which are in one sense they are symmetric. So uh, it looks like something like this. So now I need to find out the, uh, you know, the depletion capacitance because of this between the, I should say that the drain and the substrate, okay, or the bulk. So to do that, this is divided into two parts. One is the bottom plate. So this is the bottom part of the inner one, bottom and the side wall. So these are the four sides. So if I add these two, I will get the total capacitance. So I need to find out the capacitance contributed by the bottom plate and I need to find out that capacitance contributed by the side walls and if I add them, um, I will get the total capacitance which is between the drain and the bulk or drain or the substrate. So now of course here we have approximated it to be a rectangle but actually it is rounded in the true sense but this is just an approximation or estimation of the capacitance. So now if you see here again we don't have access to this depth okay and we have a designer may have some access to the size of this you know there is a possibility of we can vary this drain and the source of wheat but uh, this is also not very flexible there are a lot of DRC rules for that so uh, we will call this as X so if I call this as X so I have my W and X and here also I have W and X so now to find out the capacitance for this part is defined as the capacitance per unit area and the capacitance for this side wall is defined by the capacitance uh, per unit length okay so this is how we will see so i have my capacitance due to the uh, bottom plate which is the cz and this is defined as the capacitance per unit area and i have this cjsw which is basically the capacitance the junction so the subscript j stands for the junction so uh, CJSW uh, is the capacitance for the side wall. SW stands for the side wall. So to estimate this capacitance, I should multiply uh, the area. So the, because this is defined as per unit area and this is defined as the per unit length. The reason why this is defined like this is because as a designer, we have only the access to the top view. Okay. So uh, yeah, so that's why I can multiply this W and X and I can multiply with this one and here I can find out the perimeter total length of this side wall and I can multiply with the CJSW. It will be more clear in the next slide. So the CJ which is the bottom plate capacitance is defined by the uh, capacitance per unit area and the side wall capacitance is defined by the capacitance per unit length or this ferret per centimeter or ferret per meter. Again, the reason is because the designer has access only to the top view. So these constants are defined like this. Okay. So that's why if I want to find out the bottom plate capacitance, it is WX into CJ. And if I want to estimate the capacitance because of the side wall, it is two into W plus X into CJ as W. So this is the complete unit so this will be in ferret and this also will be in ferret okay now uh, the capacitance between the uh, drain and the bulb or the source and the bulb will be addition of these two 
capacitance which is given by this expression now uh, one important aspect of this junction capacitance is that they are dependent on the reverse bias voltage so uh, what is that if you remember the basics of the junction capacitance from the basic electronics class or device class we know that it is dependent on the reverse bias voltage so let's revise that concept so here i have a pn junction so where my anti-material is connected to a higher potential vr and p is connected to a lower potential because of which this is in reverse bias condition and of course here we will have our depletion layer the electrons of the anti-material has come to this p-type and you know it has combined and because we have this charged region here and here is positively and this is negatively charged region and this is the depletion layer okay and because of which there will be a junction capacitance so if you uh, remember the discussions of the director from your basic electronics class so we know that the uh, capacitance or the junction capacitance is given by the expression so this is the expression of the junction capacitance where cj0 is the capacitance when this vr is zero and this phi b is the junction built-in potential so we can see here that as the vr increases the capacitance decreases so uh, there is a relation between the uh, capacitance and the vr so we are supposed to include this expression in our calculation of the capacitance of the source and drain but of course here there will be a slight change this half this half is there because there is an abrupt junction between n and p region but in actual scenario uh, there will be a gradient it there will not be an abrupt junction between the n and p this is not possible in the practical scenario and because of which uh, this instead of half there will be a this will be uh, taking a value which is around 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 so so in actual reality because of the graded junction instead of half we'll have another parameter m where m is 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 so this value will be specified to you by the foundry so let's try to include this expression in the, our calculation of the source to bulk and drain to bulk uh, junction capacitance so here instead of cj where we have considered is a constant so we just need to replace it by the expression that we have seen is cj0 1 plus vr will be suppose the source to bulk and phi b and m okay so this will be the case of if we are calculating the uh, source to bulk okay and uh, similarly this also will get replaced by the cj cj0 sw 1 plus vsp okay so let's see this one and write try to write it more clearly so my source to bulk capacitance csb will be wx cj0 1 plus vsb phi b to power m note that sometimes uh, people write b b s and brings a negative term here this is the same thing we have to be just careful so if you are writing vsb there will be a positive term here So this is for the uh, sidewall capacitance. I have used two different variable m and n because these two values may be different for the bottom plate and for the sidewall. 
Similarly, we'll have the drain to bulk capacitance as, as this one. So the only changes is that we have the VDV and here also we have the VDV. Okay, and again, note that uh, because the source and drain are symmetric, so this constant may be assumed to be same. So M and N lies between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. Now uh, let's try to see how we can include the capacitance that we have calculated or evaluated in the small signal model in saturation region. So let's first draw the small signal model of the MOSFET in the saturation region. So yes, this is my uh, VZS and I have this uh, voltage dependent current source ZM VZS and then ZM VBS, okay. And of course this is RO. This is my gate, this is my drain terminal and this is my source terminal. So the capacitance between the gate and the source will be the CGS. And the capacitance between the gate and the drain is the CGD. Now we have the capacitance between the source and the bulk terminal and drain and the bulk terminal. This is my bulk terminal. So the capacitance between the source and the bulk terminal is here. CSB. And the capacitance between the drain and the bulk terminal is here C D B the capacitance between the drain and the bulk terminal. So this is the complete small signal model in saturation which include the capacitance. So let's try to summarize what are these uh, capacitance in the saturation region. So we know that C Z D this capacitance is only because of the overlap capacitance. CGS has the overlap capacitance and uh, two third of the C1 the gate and the channel capacitance. Okay, so let's go to the next space to write this one and this one. So these are the CSB and CDB. Of course, this we have seen just uh, in few slides before. So yeah, so if you now see this small signal model, we can see that there are so many components, right? There are so many components. We have one, two, three, four capacitors. We have one resistors. We have two voltage dependent uh, current sources. Okay, so this is just for one transistor. Imagine I have many transistors in my circuit and if I have to analyze all of them, it becomes really difficult to do the analysis on pen and paper. So we have to take the help of a tool to solve this complex network. And that's why the CAT tools uh, comes into picture. The CAT tools helps us to solve big circuit network when we are doing analog design. So this is what we will be discussing in the next class that how to use the CAT tools to solve this complex network. Of course, we have to do some approximation. Later on, we'll see that we can do some approximation and we can solve these circuits even uh, considering this capacitance, but we have to do some approximation to get some idea of the behavior of the circuit. Okay, so with this we end the discussion of the parasitic capacitance. In the description below of the video, I will be posting the assignment as well as I will be sharing the link for the solution. If you have any question, please feel free to mail me in this email ID. Thank you. So we will meet in the next class where we will discuss about the CAT tools.